The archive space staff interface is where archivists managing collection material for the long term can organize and describe the material, enabling access through discovery. This demo will focus on how you may use archive space to describe your physical and digital collection material. Archive space can be accessed by any web browser. When you enter the URL or click on a link to your archive space, you'll see a simple welcome screen with a logon area. Most of the work related to managing and describing your collection material will occur in either the browse or the create drop-down menus. Let's look at the create function first. This list contains records that you can create independently of any other record. You can see there are two divisions in this list. The top three are what we call material description records, which includes accessions, resources, and digital objects. The last one is the background job, which will allow you to run jobs in the background while you continue to do other things in the application. Other records that you can create are location, event, and classification records. There's no dependency or requirements on when you create these records within the application. For instance, you can create a single location record every time you finish a box and put it on a shelf, then link that container to a location record. Or you can create a batch of location records in advance and have them on hold on the application until you're ready to use them. And the same goes for your subject and agent records. When you select one of these, you will always just get a blank template with no data in it unless you have configured some fields to auto-populate by default. The browse listing page also includes a button to edit the default values for that type of record, which will auto-populate the values appearing in certain fields. In addition to creating new records, you can browse records that have already been created. You can click on View to open the record, but you need to select Edit in order to make any changes to it. So now, let's look at the record template a little bit more. Archive Space supports description of the archival resource as an intellectual entity, as well as one or more physical entities that may embody the intellectual item. The description of the archival resource can be supplemented with context and content descriptors, such as names and subjects. This is what a multi-level description looks like and what the resource template looks like when it's being fully utilized. All record templates are going to have these breadcrumbs, which will indicate the type of record you are in. If you're in edit mode, it will tell you you're in edit mode. In the case of multi-level descriptions, the next part of the record is going to be the display of that multi-level hierarchy. We call this a tree. And this is an expandable display. You can break it out completely and deepen the display area for the hierarchy. And to open it up, you click on these arrows to expand them. In this display, the highlighted or selected item is what will be the context record for this hierarchy. And any resulting action is defined by the selected context record. Selecting a context record will display the component record content down here. And you can update, edit, and delete the information associated with this component. You can use add child and add sibling to create new component records. Adding the child record will create a new component record one level down the hierarchy and at the end of the sequence, already established one level down. So if you said add child, it will create a new blank record one level down. And if we said add sibling, then that adds a new record at the same level as the context record, but at the end of the sequence at that level. This display also provides a bit of information about each component. First, it indicates the component's intellectual level, or the level of description in EAD for that component. And second, the instance information provides the physical or digital format of the materials as well as information about any containers in which the materials for the components are contained. You can move components within a sequence by selecting Enable Reorder Mode. This allows you to drag components up or down in order or even traverse the hierarchy. We can take Teresa Wayward and move her into Grover Allen, which would be a demotion 
or a move down. Once you release the component, you will have the option to add items before, add items after, or add items as children. We could also take Committee on War information and move that up so it's on the second level of the hierarchy. So you can demote, promote, and rearrange components within the same level. Whenever you move the component in any way, everything that is a child of that or grandchild moves with it. When you're done, you can select Disable Reorder Mode. Let's look at the toolbar within the record. Almost all of these records will have a Save button, and they'll have some other options here, which will vary depending on your selected context record and its indicated component level. For this component level, you can add an event record, suppress this record, or you can go ahead and delete it. To the left is the record navigation panel. This basically shows all the subrecords that are available at that context point. Our context point is one of the subrecords of this collection. So these are the subrecords we have available to us, and some of these have numbers next to them. The number indicates the number of occurrences of this type of subrecord. So there's one date subrecord, two agents linked, five subjects linked, and one note. Let's go back up onto the top parent record of this resource and see how this looks a little different. Now you can see there are many more subrecords that are available. And in some cases, many more of the subrecords that have been used. You can see there are 11 occurrences of agents linked to this record. And it looks like there are over a dozen notes. These not only indicate how often these records have been used in this context, but it also allows you to jump to that particular occurrence of that subrecord. Many of the subrecords can be sequenced according to your preferences. Changing the vertical sequence in the staff interface will dictate the order in which these terms appear in your public user interface and your EAD export. One place this action is possible is to rearrange your notes. You can add in all your notes, then rearrange the notes into your standard sequence. Whenever you create new notes, they're always created at the bottom of the existing sequence. And you can create notes by selecting Add Note up here, which will open up a blank note field down here at the bottom. Or by clicking this Add Note button. To change a sequence, you can grab these horizontal bars that show up on the left side and simply drag it to its new position. Alternatively, you can also set a default sequence for notes in the global, repository, or user preferences. It is also possible to rearrange names, or agents linked, or subjects linked. Whether it's arranged in alphabetical order, or if you want to arrange these as topics, geographic terms, or genre terms. We can now focus in on a few helpful features in the interface. All archive space records, and most, if not all, of the subrecords have data requirements associated with them. Archive space marks required fields with a red asterisk and bold type, meaning you have to have some type of data value here in order to save the record. If you don't have a data value in a required field by leaving it empty, you will not be able to save the record. Some subrecords have conditional requirements. The conditional requirements are indicated by gray asterisks. In this example, the conditional requirement is that you have to have either a date expression or normalized dates in order to have a legitimate date record. You can have both a date expression and normalized dates, but if you don't have either, then you will not be able to save the record with no date information in it. Rollover texts are associated with almost all of the labels in the archive space record. Hover your mouse over a particular heading or label to see the rollover text. Typically, the rollover consists of a definition of the element, a reference to the appropriate rule in DAX or to elements in export data formats, such as MARC, and examples of good practice. The rollover texts are also configurable and provides a repository with the means to integrate its processing procedures directly into the application. However, the resulting modifications are for all users within one implementation and thus, in a multi-repository installation, cannot be constrained only to the users of one repository versus another. 
You can manage your application in a way so you don't have to worry about these tooltips being overwritten with each new update of the application. For additional help beyond the rollovers, many of the records and record sections have question marks out to the end. ArchivesSpace provides quick access to in-context help within the ArchivesSpace Help Center through this question mark appearing throughout record templates at the end of the section bars. Clicking on the question mark for the first time in a session will load the login page for ArchivesSpace members. An authorized member will then be passed to the section of the ArchivesSpace user manual corresponding to the context of the question mark. Clicking on the question mark subsequently in the same ArchivesSpace session will take the authenticated user directly to the corresponding help text in the ArchivesSpace user manual. Some data fields can be expanded to accommodate entering multiple lines of text. These lines indicate that you can select and drag the bottom right corner of the data field to expand it. When you have even longer data elements, there are scrollable fields such as this one here. Instead of being expandable, it's scrollable, and these will accommodate up to 65,000 characters. For resources and digital objects, you can also use the Rapid Data Entry tool to open up a quick form template which allows you to type in description line by line. The Rapid Data Entry tool supports repeated entry of component records at the same level, thus requiring fewer mouse clicks than when adding individual resource component records and then adding instance records. Through the use of highlighted blue sticky values and other mechanisms, the tool provides a more efficient interface for entering series or folder lists, where multiple components of the same level and same basic content are entered one after another. The rapid data entry tool can include in one data row fields from the resource component record, the date subrecord, the extent subrecord, the instance subrecord, and the notes subrecord. Thank you for your interest in ArchivesSpace and for watching this demonstration. Please feel free to play around with the application at sandbox.archivespace.org. The login and password is provided on this screen. If you have any questions, please email us at archivespacehome at lyricist.org. Thank you.